Hello everyone and welcome to General Microbiology. Today we will be discussing the infamous Ebola virus, or more specifically the Zaire Ebola virus, the cause of several deadly outbreaks of hemorrhagic fever that has gotten a significant amount of limelight recently. The Zaire Ebola virus belongs to a family of Filoviridae, which are filamentous viruses that contain a negative sense single-stranded RNA genome. The family is further subdivided into a genus of Ebola virus and a species of Zaire Ebola virus, which is one of six viruses within the genus that causes one of the most severe and frequently fatal hemorrhagic fevers. The Zaire Ebola virus is a long filamentous envelope virus, about 80 nanometers in diameter and about 1 micrometer in length. However, during budding, several nucleocapsids can acquire one envelope to give a budding length of up to 14 micrometers. The viral envelope is acquired during the budding process as the Ebola virus escapes the cell to obtain the envelope and transmembrane glycoproteins, which are embedded into the cellular membrane during the infection cycle. The viral envelope is studded with glycoprotein trimers which are responsible for budding, binding to the cell receptors, and facilitating receptor-mediated endocytosis. The viral spikes have been shown to bind TIM1 and MPC1. Ironically, the TIM1 family of proteins plays a vital role in regulating the immune cell activity, specifically participating in the host immune response to viral infections. To date, several studies demonstrated that monoclonal antibodies against TIM1 and NPC gene mutations were associated with increased resistance against infection by interfering with viral binding and entry. Interior to the cell membrane, matrix proteins provide structure to the submembranous space. The viral core is comprised of a protein capsid of nuclear proteins arranged in the helical shape surrounding the genomic RNA and providing a scaffold to the viral structure. The virus belongs to group 5 in the Baltimore classification and contains a linear negative sense single-stranded RNA. The variant also contains the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or polymerase L, necessary to transcribe the negative sense single-stranded RNA into the positive sense messenger RNA. As this group is a Group 5 virus, the messenger RNA is made directly from the negative sense template. The size of the Zaire Ebola virus family is near the bottom range of single stranded negative sense RNA viruses at approximately 18 to 19 kilo base pairs. However, multiple splice variants create the potential for a relatively diverse proteome which is then afforded additional complexity by the ability to form multimeric protein complexes in various spatial organizations. The genome encodes a structural nuclear capsid protein NP, structural and non-structural proteins BP24 and BP35 that downregulate interferon signaling and provide immune evasion strategies, a matrix protein BP40, and several splice variants of the glycoprotein, including GP1, responsible for attachment, GP2, for fusion and entry, SSGP and SGP, implicated in immune response modulation, as well as a membrane permeabilizing delta peptide. In addition, the virus contains and genomically encodes an RNA dependent RNA polymerase and has been suggested to produce an array of 10 to 12 computationally predicted microRNAs with a potential role in promoting virulence. The virus enters the cell via receptor-mediated endocytosis by binding to TIM1, also known as HAVCR1. The binding causes micropinocytosis as a result of cyt cellular cytoskeletal reorganization. The virus then escapes the late endosome, losing its phospholipid envelope, produces the positive sense messenger RNA using the RNA polymerase, replicates its genome while translating early and late proteins, assembles the ribonucleocapsid, and undergoes budding via the host ESCRT machinery.
The Zahira Ebola virus has a very broad tissue and cellular tropism, infecting many organs and causing significant tissue damage. However, the virus has not been definitively demonstrated to infect lymphocytes and neurons during a normal infection cycle. The mechanism for this is still unknown, however, an interaction with receptors on lymphocytes has been suggested to promote cytokine dysregulation, potentially contributing to virulence and tissue damage. The disease progression and prognosis are highly variable patient to patient. Both environmental and genetic factors have been implicated in such variability. Generally, however, the disease progression is relatively fast, and the infection spreads quickly, infecting a broad range of cells, including monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, among numerous others. As the virus spreads and causes endothelial cell toxicity, the resulting cell death and cytokine dysregulation causes endothelial instability, further promoting spread. Physical symptoms of the disease begin within days of infection and include fever, sore throat, and muscle pain. As the disease progresses, the patient begins to experience vomiting, diarrhea, difficulty breathing and swallowing, bleeding, and skin rashes. Decreased liver and kidney function, increase in internal and external bleeding, low blood pressure, and dehydration are typically the last stage of infection. The largest confirmed outbreak involved 28,000 cases and 11,000 deaths. If left untreated, the lethality rate approaches 90% within 6 to 16 days post-infection. Due to its highly contagious nature, the Zaire Ebola virus should be handled by trained personnel with the highest level of biosafety percussions, biosafety level 4. Specialized facilities and equipment, including the completely encapsulating positive pressure personnel suits to prevent contamination and disease transmission, are required. That concludes our brief overview of the Zaire Ebola virus, the cause of one of the largest and most deadly outbreaks of hemorrhagic fever in recent times.